Mackenzie and I are just doing puzzles and we're in a race as you can finish first. I'm almost done. Oh, Mackenzie finished first. But I can't find my last piece. Has anyone oh. seen my last piece? Um, oh, it's right here. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Mackenzie. You're welcome. I couldn't have finished the puzzle without your help. <laughs> it's a good thing that we have each other to lean on when we need help. Totally. That reminds me of our Bible story today. In our story, God asks Moses to do something difficult, but Moses doesn't feel like he can do it. Today, we're gonna to see how God uses Moses to communicate to the people of Israel with a little help. Does anybody remember what happened to Moses as a baby? Hmm. Moses was born into an Israelite home, but was raised by Pharaoh's daughter as her own son. Right. Fast forward a few years, and Moses grew up in Pharaoh's home. He probably had everything he could ever want. But one day, he made a big mistake after getting into a fight with an Egyptian man. Uh-oh. Moses was afraid someone would find out about it, so he ran away. He ran as far as he could and began a new life. He got married and had a son, and everything was peaceful. Hmm. But God rescued baby Moses from the river for a reason. It was all a part of God's plan. And God was about to tell Moses about those plans. One day, Moses was with his sheep when he saw something that caught his attention. He saw a bush on fire, but the bush wasn't burning up. So Moses went to take a closer look. We find this story in Exodus 3, verses 5 to 6, and it says, Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Did you hear that? God was talking to Moses through the bush. What did God tell him? In Exodus 3, 10 through 14, it tells us that God sent Moses to Pharaoh. He said, you must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested and said, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? But God reassured Moses by saying, I will be with you. Then Moses worried that the people would not believe that God had sent him. So God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. What is Moses' reaction? Does he sound happy and ready to go? Is he jumping up and down and saying, yes, just what I always wanted to do? Mm -mm. No, he sounds like he doesn't want to go at all. Like he doesn't think he is the right person to go. Mm -hmm. Let's keep reading in Exodus 4 verses 10 to 17. I'll read it from my Bible. It says, but Moses pleaded with the Lord, O oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been, and I'm not now, even though you have spoken to me. I get tongue-tied, and my words get tangled. Then the Lord asked Moses, who, make, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak? Hear or do not hear? See or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go! I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. But Moses again pleaded, Lord, please send anyone else. Then the Lord became angry with Moses. All right, he said, what about your brother, Aaron the Levite? I know he speaks well, and look, he is on his way to meet you now. He will be delighted to see you. Talk to him and put the words in his mouth. I will be with both of you as you speak, and I will instruct you both in what to do. Aaron will be your spokesman to the people. He will be your mouthpiece, and you will stand in the place of God for him, telling him what to say. And take your shepherd's staff with you and use it to perform the miraculous signs I have shown you. Moses asked God to send someone else instead of him. He described himself as slow to speak. Maybe he had a stutter, or maybe he just thought he wasn't smart enough. So God allowed Moses' brother Aaron to go with Moses and speak for him. God also sent Moses with a staff, which is a stick some people use to help them walk, that with God, he would use to perform miracles. It didn't matter that Moses was full of weaknesses and mistakes from the past. God still called Moses to go and save the Israelite people. Sometimes we feel weak or like we aren't smart enough for things we have to do, yeah. but then God gives us people who can help us. Mm -hmm, totally. Mackenzie, what are the strongest people that you know? Well, probably my dad, police officers, firefighters, Superman. Even the strongest people we know, real or pretend, mm -hmm. have weaknesses. 
But that doesn't make them or us weak people, especially if we know God. Totally. We know that we can rely on God to help us in our weaknesses. Our memory verse for this month is from Psalms 121, 1 through 2. And it says, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's so cool. Psalm 103, verses 7 to 8 says, He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. Mm -hmm. Our God is the same God who helped Moses all those years ago. God is compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in love for mm -hmm. all of us, even when we are weak, especially when we are weak. Mm -hmm. God helps us today, just like God helped Moses. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for reminding us that when we feel we aren't worthy enough, good enough, or strong enough, you are with us. Through you, we are good enough. You always help us and you love us. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. See you later. Bye.